Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Hi, and welcome to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today's watch along is Citizen Kane. This intro, this footage right now, I'm actually recording fresh off of just watching the movie. Um, but this is rated the best movie of all time. It needs to be in this space. So, um, yeah, I just watched it. It is definitely something that I feel uh, is one of those pop culture things gets hyped up right and i in the previous intro that i did record it was like this look just exactly for that reason just my personality and who i am as a person being kind of force-fed an opinion on a thing is exactly what will make me delay to engage in the content myself number one <laughs> i don't like things that are overhyped and then number two it's like then i am with a very fine tooth comb gonna go through the content and make my own determination of where it ranks um so there's that to experience with the watch along and um just would be cool to share the stuff that i learned in le let me just read malton's write-up of this um because it's kind of helpful i think to actually have a little bit of this information beforehand it was what other was for me to explain about this movie is i have seen it once as a i feel like i may have been 12. this was back in the days when only amc existed for old movie content in my life they played it i actually do have one of my um movie covers my magazine covers is him on the cover orson welles as citizen kane so this is 92 93. let me actually do that let me get my orson welles uh, magazine cover from a and c back in the day and that will put into the, it into perspective for me when i watched it because i can honestly also say that far back in the very beginning of the 90s is the time in all of these years that I have been exposed to Citizen Kane being broadcast. Literally, people, I have never passed up an opportunity over the years since then to say, oh, Citizen Kane is on right now and I don't want to watch it. That is definitely something that I could say I experienced. I have consumed this movie only one time in all of these 32 years of watching these films, and there was not a thing about this movie that I remembered. So. It definitely was the equivalent of a first time watch for me. Um, so yeah, but I want to show you my magazine because it was in this month when they were playing this movie is the one and only time that I've seen it. And then let's get the information from Alton. Of course, he ranks it four stars. I'm surprised he didn't in this thick ass book of his say this in the movies that I have written up is the best movie of all time, you know, <laughs> but let me get you my magazine to show you. March of 1993, AMC, when they used to only 24 hours a day play old movies, they said this movie had just been restored. They were doing Citizen Kane headlines, three days of restored classics. And so 1993 is the time that I watched this movie one time. Um, it just easily is to say what Malton has to say. I, I do enjoy this write-up from him. Just some interesting f stats on this, just kind of what's going on with um, Orson Welles. So it's Welles' first and best film, a film that broke all the rules and invented some new ones. With fascinating story of Hearst-like publishers rise to power, the cinematography by Greg Toland, music score by Bernard... Herman and Oscar winning screenplay but written by Wells and Herman J. Mankiewicz um, are all first rate, a stunning film in every way, dot, 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 and Wells was only 25 when he made it, exclamation point. Incidentally, the reporter with a pipe is Alan Ladd. I didn't catch that. That must happen very, very early. 
um, before I stopped to pause. Just in the middle of the movie, you'll see me grab this and look up um, what was going on. But okay, so Alan lives in it. Well, that's fine. We see a lot of people um, that are like big names later on that have much longer careers um, than just this film in it. So yeah, it's a major title. Gotta be watched, right? Like, look, no matter what you are going to land on your opinion being of watching the film, for edification for being a well-informed classic movie lover i mean come on. if you can't speak to citizen kane you're kind of not very credible right that was including me i saw this <laughs> when i was 14. um i didn't remember a thing about it so yeah um that's what i have to say kind of leading in um all right so ways that we can watch the movie and me you can watch the movie and me on one screen is two tabs your movie and one me and another pull the movie to take up more of your screen um, if you don't have uh, casting ability then you would take an HDMI cable plug it from your device into your TV boom now you're on a big screen TV so really appreciate you guys being here and I am ready to do our countdown Okay, so again, um, I saw this was an RKO picture, you know, just testing it out. I can see that much, and that's really cool. That lets me know, wow, I believe RKO was one of the smaller studios, but they their films have a great feel. You're in for a nice time, and wow. Can you imagine that, guys? Being more of one of the smaller studios and you have the best movie of all time underneath the belt of what you guys pumped out. Woo! Playing in three, two, one, click. There we go, the tower. When is this from? <laughs> Mercury production. He, pr okay, by Orson Welles. He did everything about this, right? I don't want to spoil it. People haven't seen it. Like I said, since I think I was 12, maybe. AMC had it. That's how far back. So this is so interesting back in culture, right? In the United States back in this time. It's just like being a media mogul could really be a major thing. Um, I know it's the sweet smell of success is supposed to be based off of some dude that had a syndicated radio show that he would come on live on the radio on Sundays. And so I guess like back in these days, like being the head of a newspaper, right? That like pumps out the news. You basically are controlling the news and... I definitely understand that's the context of what's going on in this story. It's definitely gotta be about a power trip, right? Using power. Okay, well, it looks exceptionally haunted and huge, my goodness. It looks haunted, but there is this light on, right? And it looks run down, too. Is it supposed to be based off of Hearst, whoever that person was, right? That had that actual huge place where all the stars came. Oh, are we inside of that room now? We were outside, now we're inside of it. I think I'm not supposed to talk too much right now, right? Because we're gonna get... Okay, that. What are creepy looking shots? Wow. 
And this dude was completely alone. I mean, his nurse was not, like, there comforting him. Xanadu. Okay, see, that right there, um, what? Kubla Khan is Orson Welles. Wow. Aww. Wow. <laughs> like the pharaohs, well. Wow. Okay, 1941. Strangest funeral well, of him. It's, it seems like it would be. Why are they just calling him that? America's Kubla Khan. Wow. Himself, greatest newspaper tycoon of this or any other generation. Oh. Dying. Like Cary Grant's little newspaper in Penny Serenade is what it started out as. <laughs> Do they know the value of this mine? I mean, he seems to have a monopoly. Hmm. It seems like, yeah, he's acquiring for himself 
It's all, it seems like self, 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 self. I didn't hear about his charity work, his philanthropy. It's too much. What in the world? their Sunday Oh, they never finished. Okay, well... Okay, well, did he run? I didn't get it. Well, this is a hot mess. Was he affected? So does he lose credibility because there was? Oh, uh, this was it.
purse. This is Noara. Cool shot. So they're doing all of this work to redo that little newsreel they had. Alright, well he built her her own opera house, so is this it? That dude. So she doesn't, Alexander is not his name, right? Or with, with Alexander Kane? Was it Alexander Kane? Why is she calling this Alexander? I don't like the sign said Kane though, on the her little, is this her little building? Let's run down all the internal brick. Wow. This is noir. It's going to be something from his early childhood, right? Interesting light. I will say I do enjoy the appearance of all of this.
Um, okay, who's gonna monitor that those are the only pages he looks at? That guard was still in the room, okay. Who's Thatcher? Wrote a manuscript about him. Charles Foster Kane, okay, not Alexander. <laughs> First encountered him, what? Is this the dude that was trying to adopt him because he was in possession of... Well, we've heard this music. Don't they play this music when they do, like, little montages of the best movies of all time? Agnes... Well, it'd be the boy, right? Agnes Moorhead. This dude is in, um, None But The Lonely Heart. I just saw her mouth move out of sync with the sound. What a very stark little environment this is, right? And this is a boarding house. Somehow she solely was in possession of the mine. She gives it to the bank and him to the bank.
private portrait. Where is he right now? Where was he to have to be corresponding like this with this dude? Out of the country. These are just the headlines, okay. That's that lover from the lady from Shanghai. So this dude is, who's writing this stuff about him?
So he was stupid with his money. He never made a new list. Which is why. Um, I don't understand. So he's selling his paper back to Thatcher? Thompson. <coughs> and he remembers that. I had never seen this man in anything other than Lady from Shanghai. Yeah, I think we got that. Okay. Joseph Cotton. Oh, okay, that's what he was doing. Okay, it is good. I like the editing. Joseph Cotton starred with him a lot, huh? There is some movie that I just saw. Where Joseph Cotton wrote the story. I feel like it was some of the starring or something else. That's a name, Jedediah.
Oh, uh, is that what they're interested in? Okay, he has somebody on staff to do that? Or he himself is going to go do that? Oh, he's leaving. <laughs> he doesn't work there anymore. So they are trying to be like the National Enquirer of the 1980s heyday. His little mission statement. You don't want to. But people really didn't like him a lot.
Wow. Um, probably isn't going to be that important. So is the paper taking off now? Oh, maybe not. Is it not getting delivered or it is? Okay. <laughs> I thought like they just printed that much, but it's not going anywhere. No. Ooh. It's like a YouTube channel subscriber count, huh? Okay, his was 26. Theirs is 4.95. So they all work there now. Wow. Well, good for you. Yeah, don't forget the 132. What? I don't know if the copy of the movie that I'm watching is slightly out of sync, but once again, he did this and it didn't match. What he was doing, although that would be completely in alignment with how I told you that the sound is always creepy to me in an Orson Welles movie. celebration for right now just that he hijacked the whole staff of the other newspaper his competitor newspaper and now he's going to Europe for a vacation I think I've yet to see, though, why it's the best movie of all time. I'm not trying to read it. I just also don't want to be spoon-fed that this is something that I don't necessarily get. So that is really amazing that Agnes Moorhead is in this movie. Her career is very long, right? It's just like everybody that makes an appearance in the greatest movie of all time the greatest movie of all time. It's like everything else that we see them in, right? He's just over the top, right? Like everything. Yeah.
Oh, okay. What in the world does he have going on? Oh, wow, they've really expanded, right? Okay, I just looked up a couple things. Oh, does he have a wedding announcement? He's only 25, that's what makes it such a big deal, and this thing won Best Oscar Screenplay. Well, where is he going? She's down there. Again, I don't know if it's the copy of the movie that I'm watching, but... Things are not synced. It ended, okay. Oh, okay. With no lingering feelings. No Fs to give. <laughs> Mr. Keynes. This guy? Sounds like the Godfather. He sounds like Al Pacino being the Godfather. Did he not? The way that he is speaking, did Pacino draw on that?
Um, Malton says too, the reporter with the cigarette is Alan Ladd. How did I know that he said that? Except for that nurse who looked to be in the other room. Who's Emily? Oh. After the first couple months, they only eat breakfast together. So, they were married for like 16 years. Oh, this is why breakfast... Oh, do they just, now they don't even speak. Okay. But she died. Huh? Like, they didn't get a divorce. They said she got in an accident. Susan Alexander. Well, didn't they get busted? I felt like they showed that they were a headline in the news that he got busted in a love nest with with his second wife. 
And then, oh no, wait a minute. Does this first wife divorce him and then died? We were already told everything. So she had a toothache. What is she got laughing gas coming out of the dentist's office? Laughing gas. Is that what she said? Yeah, she said you could come inside of my house a complete and total perfect stranger standing on the corner with mud. Okay, so she didn't have laughing gas. A duck. Oh. <laughs> oh. Cross section. Does she really know who he is? He doesn't really like to hear her talk. The lighting is interesting, huh? The only way that some dude could be looking at you all hard and intense like that all close is if you were not scaved out by that, okay? So, I hope that she's really feeling this dude and that she really does not know who he is. Is she, um, gold digging him? Does she actually need to know that he's 
Charlie Foster Kane. By here, he's been married to this lady that's the niece of the president for 16 years, so his paper has been going on for that long plus longer. She don't know who he is here in his town. It's not like he met her on the street across the country or some shit. And now this scandal. Is this a debate? Who has that portrait? Okay. They have a son. So his voice is just booming that loud to fill up this auditorium. How come? At first, it was a little tiny crowd in an alley with Joseph Cotton, and it's, I got into this. Of who? Oh. Is that him right there? Wow, this is Uncle Matt from, um, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer? That's who that looked like. Okay, so yes, I am wanting this tea. So he's winning in all polls to be the governor. projected to win and it all gets blown up because he's going to be caught in a love nest with his second wife and she's okay what's the problem They just put like tea, like scandal, like hot mess in the best movie of all time. I love this. Now I love it. <laughs> you, this is my alley. I love mess. <laughs> well, what is going on with the girl though? And the way that he was looking at her when they were going to the parlor before they went to the parlor like i said some dude can't be sitting that close to you looking that hard at you that long unless it doesn't skeeve you out because if it skeeves you out then he's being totally creepy oh his opposition 
made him send the letter. Oh, okay. Oh, boss. Yeah, boss Jim Gettys. He was there at that little auditorium just a minute ago. The noir work in this. What does a boss mean? What, that those two have been hooking up? She don't care about you either, girl. Um, oh, is he not going to do it, though? Be the story happens, huh? really is going on with him and the girl though. Did they only encounter each other that one night when he got the mud off his suit? All right, wow. Did he just say your car? And she said, yes, thank you. Love Nest was singer, okay.
Okay, so the headline hits. Is this just over now? Seriously, people? Where is he? Okay, right there. Like, did he go to Europe or something? This is the way that he comes to marry this chick. Yeah. How long were they married? <laughs> um, but we, we were told... I love it. It's like we already know what's going to happen. I am enjoying it. I have to say I am enjoying it. Yeah, because Jedediah don't get drunk, huh? What, is he already planning to marry her? Is he against that? I can see how the screenplay won an Oscar. He's all pissed off him. for a long time. Yeah, that's 
that's true. Um, okay. Um. Goodness. They've been friends for a long time, not separated, and now he's going to Chicago. But I feel like that's where they said that he built that opera house for her, too, was in Chicago. Good gosh, the headlines are... Oh, she's not... Okay, it is way too loud. She's not really that talented. So she had to have her own Hopper House built because she was supposed to sing at the Met, and if she can't, then he's going to build her own. I mean, Charlie lets her have this dude. No, no, no. I'm just tearing her down. I mean, she obviously can't really do it right. Right? So, oh. Was this intermission? I mean, dang. Well, she actually doesn't sound bad. Oh, they do think she stinks. Well, she sounded high to me. <laughs> she was hitting the high notes. Okay, so Chicago, no. Is Leland there? from Leland? Oh, yes, and I did look it up. It, this is a Hearst copycat story. They haven't spoken for years.
that's all there is. Is that what you just said? Oh, so is this the end of them being able to be, um, associated? Dude, you're drinking on the job. I mean, even if you do work for your best friend, he was not going to be able to go through with that, right? That was his draft... Oh, <clears throat> it's getting a lot longer. Some what? Okay, show him away. Because what's the interaction between them about to be right now? Is Kane going to flip out on him? Flip the F out on him? Fire him? Does Kane really give an F about his wife, right? Well, they haven't for years, right? Over this girl? Bros before, and I don't know, like, it just seems like the girl... Singer, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Xanada? <laughs> Xanadu. Sloppy Joe's. Oh, he wrote him five years ago. Oh, she left him? Get him some cigarettes or a cigar. So that did end their friendship. Wow. But it's their friendship had ended years earlier. I guess it ended when 
like he's stuck to. Okay, so, yeah, all right. I think I missed what the sign is saying. It's got her name on it, but this is not her opera house. But it is very run down, right? Never seen her again. Because of the headline. Oh, okay, so he gets busted, loses the election for a quote-unquote singer. So then she just really did need to be an operatic singer. Because she could have worked in a ragtime band. You know what I mean? Like... She said to him when that night, when her tooth was aching, that she could sing, that her mother wanted her to do that, but I did not recall her saying about being an opera singer. Okay, I was wondering. That was him? Okay. I didn't think he would allow him to talk to her like that. But she can't do it. Oh. Uh, So he's impossible to deal with from, was he seven, when he got handed over to the bank? He's been way too, he has the sixth, the largest private fortune in the world. That's the problem. I mean, she can sing high. Okay, so here is, is this opening night? I mean, he's tearing her up right before the curtain is going up. Is and again, those like intermission, or it's just getting started. This is a cool shot. Okay, that's a cool shot. I mean, so if she was just telling homeboys she didn't even want to sing, this is a huge stage for her to be on, performing in front of people. Oh, that was the night Cotton was there to give his review, Leland.
Or what's Kane's actual real take on it? It's all very personal for him. Uh, he lost everything behind her that he actually was aspiring to. Okay, Joseph Cotton for real. I mean, that could not be more obviously disrespectful. I mean, she hits the notes, doesn't she? I guess it's just pitch. I can't really quite tell how she's not capable of getting her voice up that high. <laughs> we still haven't been shown in real time what happened to his ex-wife and son. was something about a car accident, right? Well, he's already fired, right? Oh, he... He sent the check back right here. That's the read. Him, so. His reasons satisfy him. He will not tell them to her. He won't be made completely ridiculous. I mean, is she getting better over time or? Oh, it's the inquirer's account of what's going on here. This movie is a trip, yes. They said it's all Orson Welles' brainchild, you can definitely see his flair on this, right? And I feel like this is what... It's his first film, too? I don't know. Okay, well, what's the room? Who's in the room not answering the door? <clears throat> that looks 
like cane. So the brink of death, and it's going to take her a couple of days to be back to okay. Does she get to stop singing now, Charlie? Damn. And she, this girl, all she can say is everything was his idea except for her leaving him. Good gosh. The shape of her life that she is in. Just because of a quote-unquote lie that they were messing around. Laughing? Yeah, I've never seen this woman again in film before again is she done now Charlie truthfully people there has not been a scene in this movie that I remember except for Rosebud I knew I needed to be quiet so that he could say that I knew that it probably happened more towards the beginning of the movie, but nothing else is a recollection. Wow, this is where they live. This is their house. This isn't, this is Anadu. Good gosh. This girl that he got stuck with, my goodness. I mean, it's probably just as well. It doesn't really seem like he would open his heart. No what in New York? So she's been doing this puzzle for like two years and <laughs> she's about to finish it. I mean, the puzzle was as big as the fireplace. Oh, it just looked like multiple puzzles. Multiple different pictures.
how do you know you haven't done it before? What weirdness? This is very reminiscent of Lady from Shanghai, where they were going through the Mexican jungle to have that little picnic. Very elaborate, right? Everything is set up. I said I got a pig roasting. Michelin chef preparing that for them. Hi, does he strike her? Okay, well, why did they cut away to out here? Okay. He just stands up over her all the time, right? Like, that's how he shuts her up, is he just stands up towering over her. Outside. Oh, nothing that they were gonna do anything about? My goodness. Did he say that he was not sorry? Jeez. That's the guy from Mr. Lucky. And a lot of other things. I mean, so she stepped into a life of the sixth wealthiest man on the planet. And it's not what she wants. It's not where she's from, for sure. Even when somebody's looking straight on, they are still in so much shadow. That's kind of sick for him to say. So it takes her wanting to just like be packed up and leave for him to be able to identify he could. What a weird height for the door. 
it's just a weirdness. Okay, so the doors are all like five foot two high. Oh, this is the butler. <clears throat> totally film noir, right? And he's in Johnny Eager, too. He's in tons of movies, but just on the channel that we have. This set work is amazing for RKO, right? What the F is the budget on this? Like, this whole thing has been built from scratch. You can totally tell. To all of his little very intricate specifications. They're, they're weird. <laughs> but RKO has never made a movie with this lavish of a set before. I feel like I was told this is his first movie. Well, okay. Did she, um, she just leaves with nothing then? Because she just left, right? But she's not taking that luggage with her. Oh, really? What's he going to redecorate right, right away? I feel like this is just my quick little opportunity. Wells' first and best film. And he's only 25. Okay, well dude, you know that this is not making you really feel any better. And you have so much property. I mean, you could do this for two weeks and not be done. So what he just picked up is what he was holding on to when he passed away. Is that the name of that boarding house? Oh, there's a lot of people that just heard him do this. <laughs> going on um all of his guests right here or is this is his staff yeah this is the staff but i felt like it looked like people that were his quote-unquote guests here too
interesting. He does things with mirrors. I did that with Shanghai lady at the end. Or the lady from Shanghai. I always said it when we picked up the... So just obviously the sound is off like this. Wow. Because of how big this thing is. It's crazy. Billion. So this is just one of their sound stages. Mm -hmm. The greatest movie of all time, huh? It really is just one of their sound stages, but that's, um, effective. Oh, I thought this was a city. If he lost a million dollars a year, he would have to shut down his newspaper in 60 years. So it seems like he didn't last very long after that lady left him, or was it? it was, she said she's gone through all of her money, so I guess it had been a while since the day she walked out on him. She looked real bagged up under her eyes, right? Why on earth wouldn't there be like an auction of his stuff? Rosebud. Oh, that's his little sleigh.
<clears throat> it wouldn't have explained anything to these people. I mean... It was just a representation of his humble beginnings. That was his sleigh, right? He didn't have anybody to pass his stuff on to, huh? Wow, so that's just the smoke burning from burning up all of his stuff. Hmm. Okay, they were new. Yeah, never have seen her again. Well, these are like, never saw her again actually either. We see him a lot going forward. Never seen him again. Everett Sloan, okay. The only other thing I've seen him in is Lady from Shanghai. Okay. This dude's in a lot of stuff for a long time. Yeah. Um, he. The main thing that I know him from is None But The Lonely Heart. Wow, Kane is the last person credited. Edward Stevenson for the costumes. This is totally backward, too. What? Um... Okay, Wells and Mankiewicz. Direction production. Hmm, I feel like this movie definitely leaves you like immediately afterward with a lot to process. <coughs> I think like a biggest part of what there is to process is the fact that you have been like I feel like shoved down your throat right that this is the best movie of all time you just watched it um I was the I've paused you know I've needed to just get up and do a couple things in the course of watching this I think that we come to be such knowledge-based consumers of these movies from this era in time that best of all time definitely is a completely subjective thing personally i am required just on my knowledge base of film from this era i am required to rank gone with the wind higher than this was just gotta do it um just for my level of enjoyment this was interesting the sound yes was off in it but i really can clearly see it's because of how big everything was um magnificent ambersons the sound really creeps me out in that um i liked the dialogue i did love the screenplay like that scene between him and cotton when he had just lost the election i feel like they were really speaking some just little fortune cookie sayings for life to each other um i think a part of what makes this a little bit difficult to embrace as the best film of all time there's like so many people that kind of had a lot of screen time that like i said never seen them before never seen them after and i don't necessarily feel like i would never i would ever need to see them again i definitely would not need to see another movie with that lady that was his second wife or his first wife and so I feel like that being who the players are and then, oh, this is the best movie of all time, 
subjective, totally. Um, you know what I mean? And I feel like with Orson Welles himself, it could be. I feel like it may have been pretty instantaneous, like how well received this thing was. Was really, really thinking about this today, people. Just like, what must the relationship between him and Rita Hayworth really have boiled down to being about? Because when you kind of think about it, like, look, I want to just say, like, at one point I was trying to just research. I was like, you know, what was the deal with them? And when did they break up? You're just Googling. And I found this article. I think it was by Hedda Hopper. It was definitely an article that was written at the time, kind of, of their separation. And I feel like Rita Hayworth was kind of speaking on kind of what the relationship had been and why they had separated. And it was like he was so brainy, ackish, and he would be working constantly. He would come home in the middle of the night and he would always be wanting to eat like cake and donuts and shit. That's the reason why he was quite large <laughs> over time. But he was just, and I was thinking about that. It was like he was comfortable. He was taken, you know, it's that in a healthy, happy relationship weight gain, right? Like you're just yourself. You're off the market. You're not worrying about like needing to get that lady. So, um, I feel that it's exceptionally interesting to me that, you know, he definitely had that aesthetic appreciation going on for how he partnered up with Rita Hayworth. I mean, like, kind of around this time. Not, I mean, but, like, this had been under his belt, right? And so there's, like, a lot of respect on his name in Hollywood. I feel like this immediately was well-received. And, you know, he's kind of just, like, that dude and encounters her and they get married pretty quickly. Um, you know, it seems like years later after they're no longer together and way, way down the line, you know, he's looking back and says that he wishes he would have done better by her. So, um, I don't know. It's just, like, his personal... I feel like the thing about an Orson Welles movie is, like, so much of his personality is what we're really just witnessing um it's interesting his artwork is very very personal and very much like an exposure into these inner workings of himself so I wouldn't say that I didn't enjoy that but I just absolutely the fun films the films that make you laugh the films that can make you cry the films that elicit so much more emotion than just kind of the subtleties, I felt like there was so much subtlety in this, um, yeah, I don't know, it's definitely one that I will continue to just be thinking about the very intricate details that I was exposed to, which I know is just all, like, coming from his mind, and it just, that being the case, too, it, I would really like to hear, did he feel like every part of his execution of this was really a reflection of the vision of his mind? Was he completely satisfied with it? It's very unique. That's one of the things that he says. It's his first movie. He's only 25. He's breaking all the rules. I love that it's a movie from this era, and we got all of those credits at the end. Um, so, yeah, you know. It's a thinker. It's one that, again, it, I think, like, the only reason you're going to mull over it so hard on where your initial gut reaction ranking is of it is because you've just been told that's the best movie of all time. So anyway, enough talking at the end here. Um, this is what we do. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.